Okay, good morning. Welcome to Geometry Project 6. This is section 1.6 of Geometry Revisited called the Orthic Triangle. And this is the first section, and I don't think there's going to be many in this book that are like this. This is the first section that left me wanting a little bit more than what was presented here. So let me quickly walk through the section and then I'll say a few more words about the Orthic Triangle because I've never heard of this before. Um, so, the orthic triangle. So we have our usual triangle ABC. And we draw the altitudes AD, CF, BE. And then we connect the feet of the altitudes in a triangle, in triangle DE, I'm sorry, DEF. And DEF is called the orthic triangle of triangle ABC. And it turns out to have some interesting properties. The figure that I've copied from the book here also includes the circumcenter of the, of the triangle, O. So O is the intersection of the perpendicular bisectors. And we'll see why they've included that in, in just a second. But let's, um, let's go through a few interesting properties that are, the, that are presented in the book. And I need to get... So, the first thing to notice is that we're going to have a bunch of angles that are the same. And they use the convention, uh, little convention that alpha equals 90 degrees minus angle A. So, 90 degrees minus angle A. So, the first angle that we can label with alpha is angle, is you see the right triangle here, AEB. AEB, so we can label that alpha. The next right triangle that we, we can see that's going to have an angle 90 minus alpha is the right triangle AFC. So notice this isn't the line going to CO but CF. This is alpha. And then it has a, they have a very clever observation here. And we have to look at the quadrilateral BDH F. And I'm going to draw that over here. Try to draw it anyway. Now you notice there's a right angle at F. B. D. There's a right angle at D. And here's H. And we have a line going like that. So <clears throat> this is a diagonal of a quadrilateral. But also notice that there are uh, that BH is a diagonal of a quadrilateral. And the diagonal BH happens to separate this quadrilateral into two right angles. And that means when I draw the circumscribed circle of this right triangle, it also happens to be the circumscribed circle of that right, of, of the bottom right triangle. So when a quadrilateral has, has two opposite right angles, it can be inscribed in a circle. And I've given you a simple proof as to why, because uh, the diagonal that doesn't connect, sorry, that connects the non-right angles is the diameter of the circle. But what that means is this angle, I better give you a different color, this is getting complicated, and wait till next section. That means this angle in this circle, this angle cuts off this arc, and this angle cuts off that arc, which means angle F B H, F B H, which we've already said is alpha, is equal to F D H. So F D H. So we can label alpha right here. Now we can go through exactly the same exercise for the quadrilateral D H E C. Let me draw that here. D H E C. And notice I've got a right angle at D and a right angle at E. And then when I, so D, H, E, C. When I draw this and I draw that, I go through the exact same exercise to see that the angle E, C, H, E, C, H, which we've already labeled alpha, is equal to the angle E, D, H, E, D, H, which is here. And we're going to call that alpha. 
But this tells us a really remarkable fact about the orthic triangle. And the remarkable fact is the altitude in the big triangle, ABC, is actually the angle bisector of the orthic triangle. That's a clever little fact, and that means this angle here, which I'll, I'll do the same thing, I'll call this gamma, gamma, which is 90, 90 degrees minus C, and I'll call this angle beta, 90 degrees minus B. So the, the angle bisectors of the orthic triangle are the altitudes of the big triangle. Okay. So that's really the only fact they, they go over in this book, but it's, you know, it's, it's interesting and it's complicated and, and it actually takes a little bit of time to walk through the proof because they just state this as a fact in, in a sentence and they don't tell you why it's true. So it's a very short section and I, so I started asking myself, given some of the other sections that we've gone through, what's the, what's the uh, circumrate, what's the circumradius? of the orthic triangle. What are the sides? What's the in radius of the orthic? So oh, I, I don't know. I so I so I just spent a little bit of time last night working through this and it turns out that there there is actually this orthic triangle has a few remarkable properties. And there's one other one that I read about last night when I was trying to check if what I had done here was correct. But it, it turns out, and I, I don't have a proof for this, although I think I can sketch one, that the orthic triangle is the triangle with the minimum perimeter that you can inscribe in another triangle. And that, that's kind of a neat fact, and, and if you try to even think about how you would prove something like that, it's not the easiest thing in the world to prove. But I think there's a physics proof of this, and it uses the fact that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. So imagine if you had a little line, <laughs> hopefully what I'm saying is right, but this is the way I thought about it. If you had a little laser beam and these, the, the outside triangle it was mirrors and you shine this laser beam, it would actually just bounce around this triangle because everywhere the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. And it's hard to imagine that you're going to have another triangle that's like that, and that's sort of the minimum minimum perimeter, because anywhere else you shine it, the laser beam would just sort of bounce around the triangle. Okay, so let's see if we can answer some questions about the circumradius, the sides, and the inradius of the orthic triangle. So I'm going to draw another picture for that. So hold on just a second.